Fear on Trial, which is a film I did in 60, oh, 70, 75, which was about the blacklist. This was with George C. Scott playing the lawyer who helped to break the blacklist. And it was of extreme importance to me because I had been blacklisted. I didn't work for a solid year in 1952. Uh, I had, in a college, uh, flux of uh, eccentricity. I joined the Communist Party when I was at UCLA because uh, I had a very conservative uh, Pasadena family background and I was rebelling against this so naturally I joined the Communist Party. And I was a member for about a year or so and I, I kept thinking this is ridiculous. I, I can't even talk to these people. They don't, they don't talk sense. So I, I, I gave that up. But it was on my record you know, and, and, and the blacklist people the Red Channels people never missed a trick. They, they found ways to um, take anybody who had any remote connection. Now, I had a real connection. I was a member of the party. But there were those who weren't, many of them, who signed petitions for the Second Front in World War II or whatever that were considered to be communist uh, front organizations, and frequently were. But many of those people who signed it were just well-intentioned, liberal, progressive people who um, were expressing their opinions. And they were, many of them, viciously uh, hurt by the blacklisting. Some had to leave the country, some fled and lived in Europe or in Mexico, and several died out of sheer, um, you know, anxiety. And, and it, was, it was a frightening time. I was in, briefly in the Communist Party for about, well, about a year and a half, and I, I dropped out. And uh, that was so early 40s, and it came back to haunt me in 1952 in the, in the heat of the McCarthy blacklisting time. And I was working nonstop. I was doing radio and early television, and even had begun doing some film, uh, some feature film. And uh, suddenly the phone didn't ring. Very unorthodox thing. My agent, I called my agent, he said, I don't know, it's just a silence out there. I, can't get anybody to bite. And so it, he said, are you any reason you should be blacklisted? I thought, oh, you. I said, uh-huh. And then went on like that for about six, seven months. And I had just recently moved to Los Angeles with a second child uh, and bought the first house, had the requisite two cars, for Los Angeles and a lot of overhead, and there was no income. Suddenly, I hadn't had, didn't have much savings because of all the expenses that had gone on. But I was used to working all the time. It was a totally unfamiliar experience not to work. So I had some very very anxious months, and God bless Albert McCleary again because I've been acting for him on uh, Hallmark and <coughs> Cameo Playhouse, and. Um, he had called me in, and I nearly died because this was the first professional call I'd had in months. And I read um, a very good part, Thomas Jefferson, and something very well written. And it was a major kind of American holiday of some sort, very patriotic kind of, but, but very well written. And he said, "Okay, let's do it. I will. I will have you called for rehearsal. It's going to happen in about two weeks' time. I'm going to New York in the meantime." So I didn't hear, and uh, ten, 10 days went by, and I got anxious. Actually, I was bugged, so I called the casting director at NBC, and I said, I haven't gotten my call yet for Hallmark that Al told me I was doing. She said, oh, you haven't read for me? I said, I read for the producer-director, and he said I had the part. I see. Are you prepared to come in and read for me and say, do something from the Constitution of the United States of America? I just slowly hung up and thought, ah. Because she was a real baggage and uh, part of the whole blacklisting framework. I, call, I was able to trace down Al McCleary and find him someplace in New York. He was furious. The red Irish face, could, I could see it flushing up. And he said, that son of a, well, I can't repeat what he said. So he called her and raised hell. And he said, Lamont Johnson had better be on that set when we start reading next week. I wasn't. And he, because of his political pull within the network, because he was a very top man. He was doing this hugely popular show and a very innovative show. And um, what he got, what he asked for, he, he got. 
So he broke that for me. The minute I appeared in a leading role, um, somehow it disappeared. People, little by little, got uh, back to calling me. So that when I started directing for Albert in Matinee Theater, I returned the favor. I, I got a lot of people who had been blacklisted. Uh, there was a wonderful actor, he's been dead a number of years, but it was terrific. Uh, I don't know whether you remember Herschel Bernardi. Um, <clears throat> I saw him in Hollywood doing uh, The World of Shulam Aleichem, a stage show, where he sang and played musical instruments and, and read Shulam Aleichem stories. And so I loved him, and I hired him for, as a matter of fact, for uh, the show with Zsa, Zsa Gabor. And I was told by the casting director, you can't have Bernardi. I said, well, he's available. Well, he's um, not available. And I knew, and I went to McCleary, and I said, I want Herschel Bernardi. And I got him. And so, again, he said, I, I was able to do that for a number of actors. Right because Herschel was a very liberal, very progressive guy, but he was not a communist. And even if he had been as I was, it was something that was among the sins of the youth. And uh, uh, it, it's just, it, to me, it was so obscene. The whole blacklisting period was so, it was a dark spot. And so when I was offered in 1975, the script, wonderful script, and we got George C. Scott to play the lawyer. And it was a wonderful, chilling reportage of how radio and television was affected in the 50s, in the early 50s, by the blacklist and the evils of it. And it was enormously important to me. I mean, it was a purgation for me to be able to, to do that. It was a very popular show. And, and uh, of course, it was great working with George C. Scott. He was, he was a tremendous actor and did a great job with it.